Hi, I am Tail the Stoop and I'm a watercolor artist. Uh, welcome to my demo. Uh, recently someone asked me uh, again if I could uh, do a narration on a normal speed video uh, because all my, all my videos so far are time lapses. So this is the first time I attempt to, to do a narrated video. Uh, I've been putting it off uh, because uh, mainly because of uh, lack of confidence as you can hear uh, English is not my native language I'm a Flemish Belgian I speak Dutch at home I speak French French when I go out because I live in France now and now I'm speaking English on YouTube so uh, Please forgive me if I uh, say something weird or um, I get stuck uh, because I can't find the right words or uh, I talk slow because I'm thinking. <laughs> um, in this demo I will talk about the materials I use like paper, uh, pencils, uh, paints, uh, the colors. I will talk about how I choose my subjects and composition. I will <clears throat> I will show you the the studies I made before I do an actual painting. I will do the pencil drawing and explain what I do and I will show you and explain how I do an actual watercolor painting, how I build it up and how I use my colors and I will show you how I mix my colors but and try to explain what I do uh, that could be rather difficult but I'll try um, so enough introduction let's get uh, busy so for this demonstration I will be painting this uh, scene this uh, seascape it's uh, Etretat, it's at the coast of Normandy and it has this arch uh, formage, formation in uh, uh, the grey cliffs. Uh, I have painted this subject twice, only twice. Uh, those paintings are both sold, so I have to make a new one, a couple of new ones. Um, in the previous painting, in one of the previous painting, I also painted this boat. It's a, it's a small fishing boat. It's always there. Um, when I choose a, a subject to paint, uh, I always go to the actual place because I want to feel the atmosphere and it get me. Uh, it gets me thinking about how I could uh, paint this subject. Uh, uh, and I'm not particularly want to paint exactly what I see. I give it a certain mood. Uh, I, I, I can imagine how it would be if it was in the morning or when it would be in the in the evening uh, I rather do it in that kind of colors this is a, a picture of uh, high noon so there are hard hard shadows hard lights hard colors I like it to be a little smoother so uh, when you go to a place and you want to paint it well this is a touristic a tourist place um, so there are many people blocking the views uh, so to take a picture i uh, is uh, rather difficult so as a solution i film uh, the surroundings uh, so i can pick out the right moment i also go search for when i paint in the studio i search for documentation for reference and I go to YouTube and I use uh, sometimes use even uh, 
uh, Google Street View to to get some to get the information I need because uh, when you take a picture the and you you start drawing often you need more information because uh, what you need to to draw is not on the picture uh, uh, so as an example for this place I I gathered some pictures um, these uh, these are screenshots I took from from a YouTube feed so just to know how this boat is actually uh, uh, how this boat looks you, you can get different angles when you on video uh, angles you never get when you just take one picture you don't when you take a picture you don't know what's the boats inside and so if you want to draw something differently in your composition you get in trouble so these are photos of screen caps of uh, of a video also this is the, f the picture I printed this is the one I'll be working on that's the other when you look at the other side of the of the beach this beach is empty <clears throat> this is the this is a photo from uh that I googled there's no people in this when I went to the place this beach is crowded it's a uh, uh, you can do almost nothing with it to 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 paint uh, this is uh, the 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 cliffs uh, a bit a little bit closer so you get some detail this is all information you need to to make a, a an interesting painting so next thing is the uh, how i how i frame my subject i use these little uh, frames these are my passport tools this is for a little painting this is for a larger painting it's a different a different frame and when I choose when I look for composition I just frame it like this and I can I can move around and see what could be uh, an interesting composition so for this one For this one it will be something like this. You can put it right over it. I want the rock formation come about one third of the the frame. And I will put the boat a little bit to the right, that it's not right under. So we get something more interesting <clears throat> so. so this is my sheet of paper uh, it is uh, Saunders Waterford uh, 300 grams um, and I will paint on the right side of the paper it's a bit you can paint on the back side but it's a little bit rougher on the on this side and it makes a big difference when you paint the paint uh, disperses uh, in a different way so for the pencil drawing I at first I make sure that I, I I draw in the right place. So I this is my passport too. Uh, this is where my how I want my picture to be framed. This is a standard size. Uh, so 
uh, it's not to you don't have I do this because I don't have to have uh, custom made passport tools made uh, so I know from the lines that I draw where my picture has to be so this is one third I make some little marks on the side just to know how I want to position how where I want to draw so the horizon is on has to be on let's look this is on half I want it to be a little higher I have to determine what I want I want do I want the sky or do I want the beach I'm gonna choose the beach so the sea the horizon will be about here I will draw in the horizon it has to be straight Yeah, well, I will be moving my pencil around a bit. Here is the the eye. They call it the the eye, the eye and the needle. Behind it, it's there's a, a pointy a pointy rock. This is in the sky, so this is a uh, just a simple. F uh, I don't know how it's called in English. A fill pencil. It's uh, two HP, so it's rather soft, and that's a, it has to be because uh, if you make a mistake, it will be easy easier to to erase because when you erase too hard on watercolor paper paper you you actually damage it and you will see marks I hope you can see this I just draw it very softly because I I'm gonna leave the needle out so you can see the the arch will be the the eye catcher of the rock. Don't have to be super accurate. Accurate. There's a cave here. So now the, the the grass some grass here here over the of the cave there's a, a stroke of grass 
don't be too it doesn't have to be so accurate it's just grass and rocks the to see to the surf to be in in the picture so and it goes all the way down to here so I thought I make it a little higher because our boat has to be here like this boat is actually pretty close This boat is actually a bit complex, so I'm thinking about making choices. Where you can see through this. And what is nice about this boat is that it has these red flags in it, and that's an eye catcher. So, um, those flags they use them so they know where so they can see where they put their nets here's the the engine I don't have to draw everything, every detail. I can do that when I when I do the painting. Here there are some pallets, some wooden pallets to su that support the boat. And there are some and some nice colors. Probably the color the palace just to to easily find them back or I don't know why but it's just nice. There's some nice ochre and some nice blue. So here are there's a rack here where they put their I distribute them uneven so 
there's no wind, so they can point in different directions. Here, there's a wheel. Well, here I get a, a little bit in trouble with this tiny photo. I don't have the detail for everything, so I have to improvise. I can get away with it in the in the watercolor because there's a kind of roughness and there's a suggestion I think it's a bit like this and here there are also some of these palettes this will give, give some depth to the drawing and the painting There's another boat here. Actually, there's a. This goes up, but. This go, goes up to the. So, a little wave breaker here. Add the flag a little higher to no, this one. <coughs> This is a little and that anomaly. I'm already populating the drawing just to give uh, to give myself some guidance uh, in the sense of distance. Um, do I want to put this boat in? Yeah. But it's a bit tilted, tilted differently as the, the motor, motor is actually more here. It's more pallets. These pallets come in handy to connect the shapes, this boat to connect this shape, this boat to this. So we get a nice <coughs> follow through the picture. There's some seagulls sitting by the surf, but yeah, 
not that important at this moment. At this moment, they're not important. What is? What else? Another boat, not sure if it's wise. To do so. But yeah, I put it in. Let's see what if it works or not. So, I always populate my uh, paintings uh, to make it, to give it a certain realism. That's why I use, I uh, collect this uh, information like this one. This is interesting. So, this is how the fisherman. Uh, are the are clothed? This is the the clothing of the fisherman. So I will draw in the fisherman to make it just. Uh, I also see here what in this reference how big, how tall the fisherman is next to his boat. So it's like. We're going to put them I'm going to put them in front of the boat. what he's doing. He's just uh, he's just finished his work and he's he's going home. Something like that. Another man here. His head is too, is too high. A human head is not on top of his body, it's actually a bit before. Before the torso. So I draw him a bit unbalanced, so he's like to suggest he's walking. Draw more people here. So I think I'm we're about done with this. I'll draw in another You, the, uh, you see there's a lot of these wooden things 
these wooden uh, sticks <coughs> they used to to drag their boats on onto the shore can put in a few more maybe some rope laying around so I think the drawing is done so the next thing is painting um, I made this little uh, color study as I told you it's uh, quite little maybe you can see it I wanted it I want the cliffs <coughs> I want the cliffs I, I hope you hear it I want the cliffs to be like blue shadows um, and I want uh, this the sky kind of dissolve into the sea so the the horizon will be um, not uh, quite <coughs> not so hard so this is hard this is soft I'm gonna tape my painting to my board I tape it to a board so if I if needed I can turn the painting upside down if I, if I want the pigment to run in the opposite direction as you can see I just turn my board around <coughs> my My painting is under an angle of about 30 degrees because I'm not painting flat because I want to use gravity. I want to, to, to let the pigment flow down uh, down to earth so it can paint itself in a way. going a bit out of my frame <laughs> the way I want it to be framed I take an extra centimeter so the frame will fit it's a little bit uh, bleed as they say in graphic design it's uh, In print, they just cut it off. This will be hidden behind the bus part too. See. So, So I will start mixing the sky my brush is so red right. 
This is an Escoda brush. Uh, it's actually, if you can see it, it's a Joseph Spookfitch series. I have two of them. Quite expensive, really good. These are, I don't know, I think it's squirrel hair and it can take up a lot of water. Ah, before I start, I'm going to show you my colors. Uh, I have my cheat sheet because uh, I use them, I don't normally name them. So I have the titanium white, I have cobalt, uh, cobalt, no, 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 vertiter blue, cobalt blue, French ultramarine, cobalt blue violet, raw umber, burnt umber, burnt sienna, I have, this is a red, this is the alizarin crimson, this is carmine, cadmium, Organic Vermilion, Pearl Orange, Hansa Yellow, Neutral Color, uh, Lunar Blue, which I never use, uh, Cobalt Turquoise, Cobalt Teal Blue, and the a very difficult to pronounce name Quinacridon Gold. That is good for mixing greens. Uh, so, for the sky, <coughs> I will use a, a mix of verditer and cobalt blue. I'm gonna So, let's get painting. Let's get started. So we already already have the sky and I'm gonna paint right through to the sea which is a darker blue. It should wait a little bit. I'm going to take this moisture out of this, of this skyline. It doesn't have to run all the way up. Just make sure I have enough, enough paint.
I use this uh, teal green because it's a green greenish a little bit of greenish hue Get the surf in. I will uh, sometimes forget to talk because I'm very concentrated into be certain that all things when they go around the right things I don't forget anything. I lift moisture and I take rough some rough strokes to so I need the white of the paper for the for the surf actually gonna use this color. Use titanium white to go for the chalky, the chalky clips because, uh, of course, they are not exactly, they're not clear white. So bleach. to try to use the texture of the paper it's actually drying very fast Ultramarine blue with the dark shadows and the clips. Right here. 
<clears throat> I'm pretty nervous here with this narration because I have to be concentrated this is a fast process but then as you can see I'm going through my palette really fast because this is trying extremely fast different this rough not too much dabbing trying to find the right Don't hold your pencil too close, not like this, but keep it keep it at the end of the of your keep your at the end of this this the, what is it the steel and in Flemish I don't know the word in English I'm searching for the right. Some horizontal lines. This part of the rock is not completely white. Too much
where there are, are white reflections I will take away the paint again with a thirsty brush with uh, his stuff. This works too very well. Some, sometimes a lot better. Start. Now for the green, I still have some mix. I still have some green on my palette. Um, just smacking up. More yellow. That's too yellow. be blending a bit more I don't like how the blue and the green are separate to be more connected Little specks of green.
I'm gonna connect the shadows and because now it's too clean. So, my camera is out, but I have to uh, go through with this, so and there won't be, you won't see my mixing palette for a little bit, a little while, but I will turn it back on later. Now I have to deal with this, these uh, shadows. Damn it. <clears throat> the other side is uh, a lot darker, so I'm going to use a very strong paint, quite opaque, quite blue.
Lately I'm painting more with bright colors. I have to paint a bit too gray. Needs to be some color. Need some boldness. So down here is a touch of green. And the rock the rocks the algae. Connect some green here. Here there's a cave. Doesn't need to be so present, but it's there. We don't be afraid to paint with your fingers. You can paint with whatever you want. 